Hi everyone, welcome to this channel. My name is Ashish, I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. In today's video, we will talk about neurosurgery training in the UK. I will talk about the pathway for neurosurgical training, the competition ratios, the salaries, and the process to get in. Let's start. Let's talk about neurosurgery in general in the UK. So there are 30 neurological units in the UK and neurosurgery is a relatively small surgical specialty making up around 3% of the surgical workforce. Neurosurgery is usually a department in large teaching hospitals that are in or near big cities. And if you're working as a neurosurgeon, your working days are usually very long with a high level of on-call work. About half of your work could involve dealing with neurosurgical emergencies and you'll have to work in theaters, in outpatient clinics, you'll have to work in neurosurgical wards, ITUs and the emergency department. This is the pathway for neurosurgical training in the UK. You start with obtaining foundation competencies. You can do that with a crest form or by completing the foundation program or by completing a standalone FY2 post. And once you do that, you have to apply for neurosurgical pathway. This is a run through specialty. This means that this is a continuous pathway for eight years. You don't have to initially apply for core training and then apply for specialty training. It is a continuous pathway. So you apply at ST1 level and you end at ST8 and there is no interviewing in between. So this is a continuous run through specialty. The initial three years are co called core training years and the next five years are called specialty training years. And I will talk about how this training is broken down into different segments during these years. So the initial stage of neurosurgical training is from ST1 to ST3. This is specialty training year one to specialty training year three. So in the first year, you do core neuroscience training and you read neuroscience. In the next two years, that is ST2 and ST3, you do your initial neurosurgical training. Now, this comprises of all the fundamental surgical skills that are common to all surgical specialties. And you also develop the skills and competencies in basic neurosurgical care, clinical neurosciences, emergency medicine, and neurointensive care. You'll have to pass your MRCS till the end of ST2 to progress to ST3. The next stage is the intermediate stage, and this is between ST4 and ST5. And here you do general neurosurgical training. You have to develop competencies in the following conditions, and those are CNS sepsis, cranial trauma, degenerative spinal disorders, hydrocephalus, intracranial hemorrhages, neuro-oncology, spinal oncology, spinal trauma and in order to progress further you'll have to show competencies in a wide range of emergency neurosurgical presentations and also in microsurgery the next phase of training is advanced neurosurgical training in this the trainees will spend more time in neurosurgical theaters operating on patients and proportionally less time in wards and in outpatient clinics you will also have a six months placement in pediatric neurosurgery and the FRCS or Fellowship of Royal College of Surgeons examination in neurosurgery is usually taken after completing ST6, that is sixth year of neurosurgical training. And this comprises of one written exam and one practical or oral exam. A specialist interest year can be taken in ST8, that is the last year of the training, and you can go for a specialist year in epilepsy surgery, functional neurosurgery, neuro-oncology, neurovascular surgery, pediatric neurosurgery, pituitary or skull-based surgery, or spinal surgery. And once you complete these eight years satisfactorily, in which you have to do a lot of things which involves your workplace-based assessments, and you gain satisfactory surgical skills, you will be awarded a certificate of completion of training and then you can apply as a neurosurgical consultant and you can work in the NHS or you can work privately or you can work in other countries. Keep in mind that when you are a trainee in neurosurgery, you will be rotating 
for six to 12 months in different places during all of your eight years. So you can be in a university hospital for six to 12 months and then you can be moved to another district general hospital. And that is how training happens in the UK. This is unlike your home country where if you join a particular hospital, you are just completing all of your training in that hospital. Um, this is very different in the UK where in each and every training program, you have to rotate in different areas if you are a trainee. Now, how can you get in? In order to get in, you need your foundation competencies. I've already talked about getting foundation competencies in lots of my videos. Uh, so you can either get a crest form, you can complete the foundation program in the UK, or you can get uh, foundation competencies through FY2 LAT or locum appointment for training posts. And these are standalone posts which give you foundation competencies. And once you get those, you can apply for neurosurgery through ODIL. And then you'll have to take the multi-specialty recruitment assessment. That is the MSRA exam. And according to your score, you will be selected for a national level interview and they will look at your portfolio as well, which will include uh, your teaching, additional degrees, uh, your audits, QIPs, research projects, paper presentations, lots of other things that I've already talked about in different videos. And according to your score of MSRA, your interview score and your portfolio score, you will get a neurosurgical post. What are the earnings per year if you're working as a NHS doctor? So if you're a foundation year doctor, that is an intern, you will earn around 28,800 pounds per year before taxes. During your course of surgical training years, you will have a salary of 33,345 pounds per annum. And when you are in your specialty training years, you will earn at least 39,467 pounds per year. And once you become a consultant you can earn from between 84,559 pounds to 114,000 pounds per year before taxes and this is just the payment in the NHS and lots of neurosurgeons do private practice so the salaries from there can be very much higher than these figures. Now there is also an academic pathway which can involve lots of research work and you can do this full-time academic research or these training fellowships to thesis level between the initial stage or intermediate stage or final stage of training in neurosurgery in the UK. And you also have a specialist year that is the last year of your neurosurgical training where you can take up a particular branch in neurosurgery according to your academic interest. There is also a pathway that is called CSR pathway and this is for surgeons who are trained in different countries. If you want to come here, uh, you can work as a non-training registrar and then you can get your competencies signed off from different consultants in different subspecialties of neurosurgery and then you can apply to get CCT through this pathway that is the CESR pathway or Certificate of Eligibility for Specialist Registration Route. Now this can be very difficult to get, so I would not recommend you to go for the CSR pathway. The ideal pathway is to come here through PLAB and go for neurosurgical training from ST1 year. The competition ratios are as follows. So in 2017, there were 152 applicants for 29 posts of neurosurgery in the country. So the competition ratio was 5.24. This has drastically increased to 16.13 in 2021, where 242 applicants applied for just 15 posts in the country. So it is a highly competitive surgical specialty and you have to be extremely, extremely good to get in. Now, there are people who usually have BSCs or MSCs or PhD neurosciences who apply for neurosurgical training or you can have someone who has quite a lot of academic background and then they are applying for neurosurgical training or either they have done different kinds of degrees they have got different kinds of national awards in medicine and lots of these things so 
these people will be your competition if you are applying for neurosurgical training in this country. So that is all for this video. I hope that I was able to give you an idea about how neurosurgical training works in the UK. If you want to support my work on this channel, please click on the like button, share this video, leave some comments for me and subscribe to this channel. This really helps the channel to grow and it helps its content to reach the people who need it the most. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you soon.